Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So in today's video, we're going to be covering statics and we're going to be looking at trust analysis, solving for members using the method of joints. And this will be the fifth part in this particular series. So we are going to be working with solving each of these members shown on this truss on the left here. So first thing you want to do when you're using a um, method of joints is that you want to solve for the reactions of the truss if they are not given to you. So we have a pin over here at B, which means we are going to have a horizontal reaction and a vertical reaction, which we'll just call this BX, this BY, and we have a roller here at C, which we are just going to call CY. So what I'm going to do first is solve for these unknown reactions, and I'm just going to throw on some assumption arrows here. I'm going to assume C sub Y is upward, B sub Y is down. And really, I don't need to utilize my three equilibrium equations of summing forces in the X, summing forces in the Y, and then summing moments about a point in order to determine what B sub X is. Because if I look at um, what I have in the horizontal direction, I just have 48 kilonewtons being applied here A. This is a vertical force of 35, don't count it. So really B sub X is automatically resisting or countering that 48 kilonewtons to the right. So this has to be 48 kilonewtons to the left. However, I do have to sum moments in order to find B sub Y or C sub Y. So let's sum moments about B in order to get C sub Y here. So I'm just going to have my 48 kilonewtons C sub Y and the 35 kilonewtons having a rotation about B or causing moment about B. So I'm going to start with my 48 kilonewtons. It will be rotating clockwise about B, so it'll be negative based upon my sign convention of counterclockwise being positive. It has a vertical distance or a perpendicular distance to B of 0 0.7 meters. And then I'm going to repeat that process for 35. It is still, or the 35 is rotating clockwise, so it's still negative there, times its perpendicular distance to get it over to B since it's a vertical force, horizontal distance of 4.8 meters. And then lastly, the way I have C sub Y assumed, it is going upward, which means it is a counterclockwise positive moment rotation here times its perpendicular distance of 2.4 meters equal to zero. So I will get C sub Y to be a positive 84 kilonewtons. And since it came out to be a positive number, that means my assumption of upward was correct. So this is 84 kilonewtons. Okay. And then I can sum forces in the vertical direction, and that will give me B sub Y here. So I will have my 84 kilonewtons from C sub Y, subtracting off the 35 kilonewtons here on the, at point D. And then I have B sub Y assumed downward, so minus B sub Y. And B sub Y pops out to be a positive 49 kilonewtons which means my original assumption arrow of downward was correct since it came out to be a positive value. So this is 49 kilonewtons here. Alrighty, so now that I have the reactions, I can start solving for the members of the truss. And I only have one, two, three, four, five members to solve for. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this in the speed or the speedy method, so to say. And what you're going to do is you're going to start at one of your joints and you're going to isolate that joint out and only look at and only concern yourself with any kind of reactions, applied forces, or members connecting to that joint. <clears throat> so if I'm looking at joint B, I don't really care what's happening at joint A. I don't care what's happening at C. I don't care what's happening at D. I'm only concerning myself with the 48 kilonewtons from B sub X, the 49 B sub Y, member B, C, and member B, A, and I'm only concerning myself with what's isolated right here. And what you're going to do is that you're going to sum forces in the X and Y direction at point B with only concerning yourself with those forces acting at point B. So if we look at point B here, we have a diagonal member and diagonal members will supply a vertical and horizontal force. And we have BC, which is a horizontal member, which means it will only supply a force in the X direction. So we have three unknowns here. We have one in the X, two in the X, and then one in the Y. And these three have to be in equilibrium with the applied forces at B, which is B sub X and B sub Y. So summing forces in the X direction first at B, what we would have is we would have this 48 kilonewtons to the left, an unknown amount here from AB, and an unknown amount here from BC. Two unknowns 
can't solve for anything directly in the x direction right now for joint B. Well, let's look at the y direction. Well, I have B sub y, which is 49 kilonewtons downward, and I only have one other y force being applied here at joint B, which would be the diagonal vertical portion of AB. So since B sub y is going downward 49 kilonewtons, that means that this y force has to be going upward that same amount to cancel with it, which is 49 kilonewtons. Okay, so now I've solved for the y forces at point B. I'm still left with these two x forces, so what do I do? Well, you can use the diagonal here. And anytime you have one of your x or y forces for your diagonal, you can find the other one. So since we have the y one here, we can find the x component of this diagonal using this ratio here. So the x component force for the diagonal divided by the y force component for the diagonal has to be equal to the x distance of that diagonal over the y distance for that same diagonal. And you can use this ratio because, well, if it's a true truss, it only contains axial forces. So since it only contains axial forces inside these members, those ratios of the components have to be at the same slope or same ratio of the slope given by the dimensions. So just fill in this ratio, and this x force is the only thing that's missing. So we would have our x force for the diagonal divided by the y force, which is 49 kilonewtons, is equal to the x dimension of the diagonal, which is 2.4 meters, divided by the vertical dimension, which is the y dimension, which is 0 0.7 meters for that diagonal. And this x force for diagonal AB pops out to be 168 kilonewtons which makes sense because 2.4 in the x direction is much larger than the y direction, so the x force has to be that much larger than the y force applied in that diagonal. So now that we have that force, let's go ahead and get the arrow direction here. So how do we do this? Well, it was determined that the y component has to be going upward to cancel with the b sub y down here. So looking at our diagonal here, let me scroll just a little bit. Our diagonal is sloped like this. And since we have axial forces, our arrow relative to joint B down here can either be going up and to the right, or it has to be going down and to the left. That's our only choices that we have at joint B for this diagonal because it has to be an axial force, it has to be along the line of action along the slope of your member. So this means that we would have up and to the right, so our vertical would be going upward, our horizontal will be going to the right. This one means that our vertical will be going downward and our horizontal will be going to the left because it's down and to the left, up and to the right. Well, we've already determined that we are up here on this one. So that means that my arrow relative to joint B looks like this, which means I'm up and to the right, which means that my 68 kilonewtons has to be going to the right relative to joint B. So, in actuality, you would not show these little arrow directions on the individual member or the individual uh, on the individual component forces. You would show it on the member relative to the joint you're looking at. So we would have up and to the right. And this just means that the 49 kilonewtons is going upward relative to joint B or at joint B, and the 168 kilonewtons would be going to the right at joint B. Alrighty, so we only have one more X force to get here, which is B to C. So what do we have going on here? Well, we have 48 kilonewtons to the left, 168 kilonewtons to the right here from this arrow. Well, that means that we need an additional 120 kilonewtons going to the left at joint B to cancel with the 168 to the right to help out that 48 over here at B sub X. So the 120 will add with the 48 to cancel with the 168 so that we are in, in equilibrium in the horizontal direction at joint B. So now we have joint B completely solved with all our forces and our arrow directions here. So before we move on to another joint, what we're going to do is we're going to complete the members here. And by completing the members just means you throw on the arrow direction at the other end because we've only been working at joint B. So let's look at this member up here from A to B at joint A. Well, this arrow is pulling away from B, which signifies that this member is in tension. So it has to be doing exactly the same thing at the other end. It has to be pulling on the joint. 
So a good way to remember this is that the arrow at the opposite end has to be going in the opposite direction. So this one is going up and to the right, down and to the left, opposite end, opposite direction, pulling, pulling, tension. All right, let's use that same methodology here for B to C. We are pushing on joint B. So that means we have to be pushing on joint C. The direction is to the left at B. The opposite end direction has to be in the opposite direction. So it has to be going to the right then. This signifies compression when you are pushing on, pushing on a joint. Okay, so now we've completely solved for member AB and BC. So let's move on. And let's just go to joint C because it's, well, it's right there and it's a little bit easy. You'll see why. This is a T connection. Anytime you have a T-shaped connection, which can look like this, can look like that, can look like this, can look like that, or some kind of angle of that. Anytime you have a T-connection, it's very simplistic because, well, we only have two unknowns here and they have to be equal and opposite to the values that are going in the X and Y direction. So AC and CED are the only ones supplying unknowns here. This is only vertical. CD is only horizontal. Well, I only have one horizontal force here of 120 kilonewtons at joint C. And remember, we are looking at joint C. So I'm only concerning myself with what's happening within the realm of joint C. I don't care what's happening over here B. I don't care what's happening up here at A or D, only what's being applied at joint C. I have 120 kilonewtons being applied in compression here at joint C. It's going to the right. So I need another 120 kilonewtons going to the left here to cancel with this 120 going to the right so that I have equilibrium in the horizontal here at C. All right, let's apply that same methodology to the vertical here of AC. I have my reaction here of 84 kilonewtons going upwards. So I need an additional 84 kilonewtons going downward here at joint C to cancel with that. So now joint C is in complete equilibrium here. Pretty much everything is pushing on joint C. So let's fill in our arrow directions for our other members here. We have 120 kilonewtons, which is compressing joint C here. So it has to be compressing joint D. It is going to the left. Opposite end, opposite direction is going to the right. All right, and then 84, we are compressing here at C. So that means we have to be compressing at A as well. It is going downward, so at the opposite end, it has to be going opposite direction, which is upward. All righty, so now let's go over to joint D. And our last member that we have to find anything for is AD. So this one is going to be pretty simplistic because I only care what I'm only looking at D. So I really only have 35 kilonewtons of downward vertical force, 120 kilonewtons of rightward horizontal force. Well, if I look at forces in the vertical direction, I need 35 kilonewtons going upward here to cancel with this one. And I need 120 kilonewtons going to the left to cancel with this 120. It's going to the right. So that means I need an upward and left arrow direction. Well, up and to the left. So 35 is up, cancels this, this one going downward. Left, 120 kilonewtons, cancels with this one, which is going to the right. Alrighty, so there are my forces for member AD then. See how fast this can be? So let's complete the arrow direction here. We are pulling on joint D, which means we are in tension. So we have to be pulling on the opposite end as well. We'll look at the arrow directions. We're up and to the left, opposite end, opposite direction, down and to the right. Now, some may say this is an incomplete version, but this is technically complete. What you could do to make it fully 100% complete, it just depends on who's, who's looking at this and who's uh, technically grading this, if this is a homework or a test problem. So whatever they want, different preferences out there. But for me, this would be perfectly fine and acceptable. In real life industry, this would also be acceptable. <clears throat> what you could do is that you could fill in a hypotenuse for the, your diagonals, A, B, and D, C. Just take 168 squared plus 49 squared, square root it, same thing over here. And what you could also do is you could write tension or compression. Pulling on a joint is tension, pushing is compression. So compression, 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 and tension. You could also write your C's and T's if you wanted to. All right, so before we leave here, there is one way that you can check your trust to make sure you are correct at the end. And that's gonna be utilizing the joint that you did not sum anything at. So we used B, we used C, and we used D to find all our member forces. Typically with trusses, you're gonna have one joint where you did not look at. 
that would be your check joint to make sure everything cancels in its equilibrium at that joint. So let's look at joint A here. So at joint A, we are going to have members AB, AC, AD, and this 48 kilonewtons of applied force. Now, let's make sure that all that information is going to cancel in the X and Y directions here. So let's sum forces in the X direction have to be equal to zero. We'll take to the right as positive here. So looking at AB first, I have 168 kilonewtons. The arrow is down into the left. So that means my horizontal will be going to the left, which is minus 168 kilonewtons. This 84 is vertical, don't count it. This 48 is horizontal, let's count it. It is going to the right, so it'd be positive 48 kilonewtons. And then I have this 120 horizontal right here from AD. The arrow is down into the right, so that means it will be going to the right, so that'd be plus 120 kilonewtons. And does that equal out to be zero? Well, yes, it does. So that means that my horizontal is correct. It is in equilibrium. So let's double check and just make sure that the vertical is as well, so we didn't make any errors throughout here. So summing forces in the vertical direction at joint A, let's see what we have. Well, we have this 49 here. Its arrow is down into the left, so that means it will be going downward, so it's negative. We have 84 right here, which is going upward at joint A, so that is plus 84 kilonewtons not 840, 84 kilonewtons. And then lastly, the only other vertical force we have at A is the 35 kilonewtons, which is going down into the left. So that'd be minus 35 kilonewtons. And does that come out to be zero? Well, yes, it does. So what this means is that my uh, forces that I have for my truss here have all canceled out to be in equilibrium at the joint that I did not use. So that gives you a pretty good confidence level that all your numbers and all your arrow directions are correct for your truss and that your truss is completely solved in a correct manner. And that's how you would work that particular truss using the method of joints. And of course, the more practice you get with this kind of stuff, the faster you can get with it. Just make sure you do that check at the end. So I hope this video is helpful. And if you want to see more problems on this variety, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us out greatly. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.